Hey everyone, welcome to another video. So in this video we're going to go ahead and paint the calipers on the Toyota Yaris. Um, so as seen in the previous video, we've already gone ahead and disconnected the rubber brake line from the back of the caliper. Um, then from there we're going to actually go ahead and remove the caliper itself and the bracket that holds the brake pads and everything to the rotor. So I'm going to be using the VHT caliper paint. This is the blue color. Um, they also come in different colors like green, red, or yellow and black, um, but I decided to go with blue. Um, so let's go ahead and remove the caliper, prep it, and then go ahead and paint it. So let's go. So this is the back of the caliper. Um, in the previous video you saw this is where the brake line comes in. This is the bleeder valve. And here are the guide pins for the caliper. So first thing we're going to do is remove these two pins. And that uses a 14 millimeter wrench. That's one. And that's two. And from there, this should just pop right out. like that. Now we can get rid of the brake pads here. So these just slide out really easily. Okay so to remove the bracket there's these two bolts back here that uses a 17 millimeter. I'm gonna go ahead with the breaker bar and attempt to break it. Now that we disconnected everything, so this is the caliper itself. As you can see, this is a single piston caliper. Um, so I will need to compress this piston using a special compression tool for brake calipers. So this is the main caliper itself. Of course, these are the brake pads, the back and the front, and then the bracket itself. So these are actually the guide pins right here. And these are also the retaining clips, which I should actually remove. To remove these, you just you just kind of fall into place. You just kind of pry it out, just like that. Same with the bottom. There you go. So now I can go ahead and start cleaning this and getting it ready for paint. This is a brake caliber kit that you can rent from your local auto store. So I went down to my local auto zone and rented this kit out. Um, so basically how this works is there's different size um, of these cylinders and they basically need to match the ID of the piston so for this case i believe it's this one so this one just kind of fits inside here as you can see and it just fits nicely so that goes there and then you take this tool and this guy and you basically this goes in here just like that so this is here And this guy comes right over here. And this goes over this. And just basically thread this. Snug it up. 
So because I know there's an extra fluid inside here, I'm going to put the pan up below it. This is the valve right here, or the banjo bolt where the brake line comes in. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this. Kind of leave this on the side. And from here, you just see all the extra brake fluid still popping out. You just keep going. Alright, there you go. So the piston is fully compressed. Take this out. And then we're good to go. Just going to go ahead and reinstall the banjo bolt. Just to make sure the threads are okay when I install the new hardware. Okay, so with the piston compressed now, all that's left is to get these guys clean. Um, but before that, I'm going to go ahead and remove the guide pins on this bracket. So these spin pretty easily. And they should just come slipping right out. You just got to be careful of the boot. Just don't want to tear the boot apart. So they kind of just slip around. There you go. These should just come right out. So as you can see, this is the grease that's inside these guide pins. And I'm going to go ahead and put them in a container. Soak them in a degreaser before we reinstall them with new grease. So same with this one, just kind of loose. Make sure you're careful the boot pops out. There you go. All right, so this is the guide pins that I have here. I'm gonna actually pour it in some purple power. This is a degreaser. I'm just gonna go ahead. Gonna kind of let this sit for a little bit, kind of get rid of all the um, existing grease that's on these guide pins, and then we'll come back after and see how they look. So um, out, I'm outside now with the, uh, the bracket and the caliper itself. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to go ahead and kind of mask off some areas I don't want to damage. Like these boots, for example, these rubber boots, I don't want to damage them while I go ahead and clean it because what I'm going to use is these uh, different assortment of wire brushes and the sanding flapper wheel. Um, you can get these at your local hardware store. They sell it in kits or individually. Um, so there's like this one, it's a smaller one. There's like this cup version. There's the the wheel and also a sanding wheel. This has a bunch of just sandpaper in between. So this is a good, fast and easy way to get rid of all these um, kind of residue, brake residue and grease. That's all over the brake caliper, um, like you can see here. So I'll be leaving the bleeder valve and the banjo bolt for the brake line intact because or installed because I don't want to damage the threads or get anything contaminated and get into there. So I'll leave those there for now. Um, they will be replaced when I reinstall it after I paint it. So if you don't have like a wire wheel or any kind of attachments for like a drill, you can also just use like a regular wire brush and you can just go ahead and just, as you can see, I already got rid of a lot of stuff. Um, but I mean, this, this will work just as well as these but you'll be spending a little bit more time using this. So if you have a chance, get these because you can attach it to, you can attach them to a drill. So this is an old wire wheel or wire brush cup I had uh, before. So you just attach it to a wheel. And just... So it gets rid of the residue really quick and easy. So now that everything's all taped up, we're getting, we're gonna go ahead and start cleaning these calipers. Be sure to wear a respirator because the brake generated from these calipers are very fine so you don't want to inhale them and get those into your lungs. So 
protect yourself and wear a respirator. Okay, so just finished polishing and getting rid of all the dust and grime on the brake calibers for the passenger side. So, and also I noticed you can actually take out the boot from where the guide pins go in. So I actually got went ahead and actually removed it and was able to kind of clean and get a better um, chance of getting inside here and cleaning the inside but as you can see it's really shiny really nice and clean sprayed it down with some brake cleaner to really get rid of all the extra residue and brake dust that built up same with the caliper as you can see it's really nice nice silver color cleaned a little bit inside the piston the cup itself but I tried to be careful with the rubber. Um, so when I was over here, I was just using the wire brush manually just to be careful not to rip the boot. But it looks pretty clean. So as a comparison, uh, here's the driver's side. You can see just how dirty it can really be. It's, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up with the driver's side bracket and the caliper and then from there we can actually go ahead and start painting these guys. Alright so went ahead started masking. Um, so these are the, where the guide pins go. I simply took out the rubber boot and taped it up. Same with these holes. Uh, I left this hole open because I'll have a hook going through here to um, hold it caliper so went ahead and masked this piston off to protect the rubber boot and the cylinder itself um, I took out the threads for the brake line and the vent valve these are just earplugs um, it's a little old little trick I learned from someone where you take these out so these are the ones you can try to put in your ear so and if you want to if you don't want to try and mask this off you can just kind of squeeze this and just kind of stick it in and then it'll expand and then that way you can cover the hole so same thing with these just earplugs so everything's all protected now and all covered the trick to this one is actually using something of similar size diameter that covers this entire circle so what I actually used was the oil filter tool to help install and remove it um, this circle diameter was actually a little bit bigger than this but I wanted it to be a little bigger so that I can kind of tuck away the the tape underneath and protect the rubber so this is all good so similar for the holes on the bracket, I just took a socket, a random socket or any socket that kind of matches the the, um, the OD of the, the area I wanted to tape off and basically just put on a piece of tape, like put on a piece of tape and then you trace a circle around it and then cut it out. You get these perfect cutouts for the holes. So now that that's done for both the driver and the passenger, we're going to go ahead and start painting. Now 
All right, so we're going to start off using some primer. This is the VHT engine enamel primer. Um, I'm going to do about two coats. So the first coat is just going to be kind of a light coat just to kind of get paint on to the parts and get it ready for the actual paint. And then after it's done, we're going to let it sit in the sun for about 10 minutes just to kind of let it dry and cure. And then we'll go ahead and apply a second coat of primer going on a little bit more heavier so that we can make sure that the entire part is covered and ready for painting. So after letting the parts cure for about 30 minutes, we're going to go ahead and apply the VHT caliper paint. So I'm going to go ahead and apply three coats on the brake parts, starting with the first coat, of course, being a light coat, just to make sure I got enough coverage on the parts themselves. And then after letting the parts sit in the sun for about 10 minutes to completely cure and dry, I went ahead and applied the second coat, going on a little heavier and a little bit thicker to provide a little bit more coverage and add a little bit more layers of blue to the brake parts themselves. So after letting it sit in the sun for about 10 minutes to fully dry and cure again, I went ahead and applied the final coat of caliper paint. Of course going on thicker and a little bit heavier than the previous coat just to make sure I cover the entire part and kind of give it a little darker blue and the final coat before a clear coat. So of course again after letting the parts sit and dry for about 30 minutes we're going to go ahead and apply the clear coat using the engine enamel clear coat from VHT. And so the process is the same as before. I'm going to apply three coats of clear coat waiting 10 minutes in between each coat and on the last coat I'm actually going to go pretty heavy so that I can get a glossy and finished look on each of the brake parts before I go ahead and reinstall them back on the car. Alright so now that the caliper is painted we can go ahead and remove all the masking. So these ones just pull out really easy. And then same with this hole and this one. Last but not least, the piston. So just gotta just like that. So here we have the new banjo bolt. So it comes with two brand new copper smash um, crush washers. So it goes on either side, but for now we're just gonna put both of these on together. And then this goes in the back of the caliper. All right, so we'll, this will be tightened later when we reinstall the brake line here. And then lastly, we're gonna install these guys. So this is a replacement of the bleeder valve, but instead it has a little check, it, check valve, a built-in check valve that allows fluid to go out one way, but not back in. So this is made for exactly, these are the dimensions. It's a M7. Um, the hole for the calipers. This is an M7 bleeder valve. So the way this works is that there's a little ball inside this valve and so when you crack it, crack the bleeder valve open, fluid will flow through here and then the fluid will go up and push the little ball and allow fluid to come out. But then when you let off the brake pedal uh, the fluid's going to stop flowing and the ball valve is going to fall back down and it's going to not allow any fluid to flow back into the system. So this is a one-way check valve that only allows fluid to go out and not back in. So this will replace the need for two people to do a brake flush. Normally you would have one person at the brake pedal that presses the brake while the other is at the caliper itself um, opening and closing the bleeder valve to allow fluid to come through and so this will make it a lot easier 
to perform brake flushes. So you just take the new bleeder valve screw and this just goes right inside it goes right inside the old one and then you want to make sure this goes all the way down so this uses an 8 millimeter and then you just kind of I want to make sure you don't over tighten it so just just enough and then from there you can put the bleeder valve cover on that will protect it from the outside elements and preventing anything from contaminating the, the valve all right so with that now we can go ahead and install the caliper on the car So now we can go ahead and install the bracket first. Then using the bolts, they go right in. Before we go ahead and tighten those down, we're gonna go ahead and put some NECs on the bolts and using a 17 millimeter just tighten this down Alright, so next thing we can do, we can go ahead and torque the back bolts. So these are torqued to 79 foot-pounds. Alright, next thing you want to do before we reinstall the pads is we're going to go ahead and put some brake grease in these contact points. So I'm just going to put more of this in these areas. All right, and then now we can go ahead and reinstall the brake pads. All right, next we can take the caliper and we can go ahead and install it. Same thing, go do the bottom first. I'm just going to put the bottom bolt in for now just to hold it in place. And then, same thing.
everything and he sees on the bolts. Alright, so take a 14 millimeter socket and just tighten these down. Then go ahead, take your socket wrench, and then torque these down to 22 foot-pounds. So that's pretty much it. So the brake caliper is nicely painted, all installed and everything, and ready to go. Um, all that's left to do is connect the stainless line, reconnect the brake line. So here I'm going to reconnect the new stainless steel line. So be sure to check that video out to see how I replaced the old brake line and installed the new stainless steel line. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Toots!